Alrighty. So uh, recent, so recently, I got this YouTube comment uh, to where I'm supposed to get the hidden trophy. I think I'm supposed to click on the, uh, not the, the, yeah, the little copyright C symbol. Well, not here because I haven't beat the game yet, but <laughs> I think I gotta travel back to the uh, question mark to see if I can click it. Oh, a mock. Interesting. I mean, does it matter? Like, if I click that or not? Oh, shit. Jessica's piercing shrieks rang out. But that was just because Jessica's scream was the loudest. The same thing spilled out of Battler and George's mouths as well. Eva, just like Natsuki, spread her arms and with a terrible expression roared at the kids. Wait. Is Omake like the bonus parts to it? I didn't even know that's a thing. When Natsuki had spread her arms, I had thought that she was trying to prevent us from advancing any further. However, right now, that wasn't why Eva was spreading her arms. Because her right arm is obviously doing something behind her back. What is she hiding there? <laughs> yes. I had seen this kind of cheap scene all too often. The manga, TV, anime, movies, and visual novels about crickets that won't be released for 20 years. I had seen it over and over again. <laughs> this was just, just seeing something appear in real life that I had seen plenty of times before in some of those more sensational movies, wasn't it? That alone should Ah, but that, that suit with that old bastard, isn't it? I get it. And that's Uncle Kraus, Kirisan, and Auntie Rosa. Whoa! <laughs> I feel like I've seen this scene before, but it's like, why is it playing this jazzy music? Especially Golda. He's really fucked up. <laughs> Wait. Wait, is Omaki like supposed to be like the same scene, but they added like some some amusing they should with sheer horn some amusing dialogue in there? Oh I can't even pause. Like I can't even right click. He's really fucked up. <laughs> I see. Is, uh, this happened pretty uh, recent. As far as I can tell by looking at the damaged area, there is a high probability that they were murdered by half naked demon girls. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> Half naked demon girls. Uh, I feel like that could easily become a meme at this point. So this is like... Okay, if they call it Omaki, then obviously it feels like it's a... what it's like to have it a abridged version of Umineko. No, I must watch what I say. I'm a fat old man and girls are outside my area of expertise. I'm hungry. Aunt Natsuki caught Jessica in her arms and Aunt 
the anti-Eva Ka George Aniki. So I was the only one who could approach the entrance to the storehouse. Uh, if only there had been someone here to catch me too. I wouldn't have needed to have this horrible evil scene burn into my eyes. No, that's not it. Okay, maybe that explains the Jasmine. Like, this is actually a fucking goofy shit. I'm standing here, not because the pe people who would catch me aren't here, but because the people who would catch me are all sticky and gross, are they? Aren't they? Uh. Just as Jessica had said, it did look like a storehouse used to keep gardening tools and corpses and stuff. A lawnmower with extra blades, a grass sickle and a hammer, a saw, and Hojo Tepe's left arm. Higarashi rep. Okay, now you just make it look like it's just, it's just like they just brought that. Uh, that's insane. Piled up potted plants in bags of that shit you feed plants with. <laughs> uh, and treated just the same. The corpses of several people had been laid to rest there. No, had been thrown in there. I could tell them by their clothes. That old bastard in Kiri-san. Uncle Kraus and Auntie Rosa. Further back, Dota-san and... There's still more of them? Pretty sure you already count all six, right? How many people died? Fucking hell, I can't even count them on one hand, god fucking damn it! Although Grandfather couldn't do it with his feet, right? Damn him. I didn't know whether it had been one of those garden tools which if used for something other than their intended purpose could definitely be wielded with a naked brutality. Wait, that just sounds wrong. Better not let Beato hear me say stuff like that. Uh... What is even going on anymore? Oh, so this. I don't know why it reversed back to this. Uh, okay, so episode one, Omake is the uh, the um, thing with the where it takes place on uh, on the first Twilight. What happens in episode two though with Omake? That's what I wanted to know. There's no way I'll ever come to a place like this again. Canon sighed for about the zillionth time that day. Oh shit! This is the part where um, Canon visits uh, uh, Jessica's performance at a school. As he did, the lighting changed and the standing audience started cheering. Looking around, I realized that there were suddenly a large number of people here. And unlike earlier, they were all guys. With this huge crowd, I couldn't even see the stage. Fortunately, there was a fallen beer case nearby, so I tried using that as a footstool. And I noticed that there was now a new group on the stage. The leader was Milady, aka Jessica, obviously. She had changed into stage clothes and was even holding a guitar. I didn't know she could play. No, maybe she could. I have seen her practicing air guitar before. Natsuki-sama wouldn't approve of any hobbies outside of study. I mean, she is a bit of a strict mother after all, so uh, would, would, I bl would I blame her? Not really. I don't know. But yeah, I can see why. Jessica wants to be, again, Jessica wants to be a bit of a rebel. Wouldn't approve of any hobbies outside of study. Maybe she was always practicing in secret. Come to think of it, she's been returning really late from school recently, hasn't she? Maybe she's been practicing at school, far away from Natsuki-sama's prying eyes. Prying eyes. It really is for the best that Natsuki-sama didn't come. 
I mean, I'm pretty sure there's a bit of a chance that she'll be proud of it nonetheless. If Milady were to get scolded by Natsuki-sama after putting so many hours of practice in, she would probably be very dejected. God damn. I could hear Jessica-sama's forceful voice through the speakers. Jessie-sama? Maybe that's her nickname at school. The students in the audience kept calling out that name. I was a little aggravated by that inferior name, which was inappropriate for a milady. Jessica- Well, it's a nickname, so it's of course it's going to be like, you know, outside of a- formal tradition. Jessica-sama was in great spirits as they kept calling her Jessie-sama. They were all probably her fans. With her mic performance, she was responding to that and firing the place up. It was almost like a song program on TV. Ah, just like the bringing back the bit of a throwback, huh? At first, I had thought all this... I had thought all this was fr fr frivolous. But that feeling now changed into appreciation. This was pretty incredible in its own way. Kanon had never listened to music of his own free will, but he had often heard the kind of music that the people of the Ushiromiya family liked. Since that was almost all classical music, Kanon had naturally started liking classical music too. I mean... I listen to classical music from time to time. Like, it's not always fucking anime and video game music. See, that's the thing, right? That's what the—that's one of the things that people don't understand that, like, music is always going to be subjective no matter what. I, mean, I try. I mean, you don't have to force yourself to fit in, like, to listen to everything, you know. So to Kenan. The songs Jessica and the others were singing were, how should you say it, very modern. In any case, I thought that if Natsuki-sama heard it, she would probably faint. Uh, depends on what kind of music she would faint to. Holy shit! Yo! But everyone looked like they were having a really good time. Yo, that okay. They remember the one comment I got earlier when I was recording episode two, and I said I thought was there like a Toho reference? Holy shit! That's it's real. That is so wild. The only thing that changed in episode two is the music in there. Jessica would cosplay Marissa from Toho. I don't know who's cosplaying Raymu though. I guess it's one of the uh, Jessica's band members, but my goodness. But everyone looked like they were ha really but everyone looked like they were having a really good time. The diehard fans who had even brought pen lights sang along, dancing crazily with the exact same movements, almost though it had been planned ahead. On the stage, Jessica Sama also sang enthusiastically, dripping with sweat. We couldn't find a single element that was appropriate for her daughter of the Ushiro and Mia family, but it looked like she was having a lot of fun. That is wild.
the the the, the entire crowd is raving over Toho music. Again, today behind me, the sound of footsteps, Oyashira Sama's stalking, curses, disappearances, sacrifices, torture, Oni Kakushi de eat it. Don't say Marissa. Oh, I'm like, what? I, I didn't know Higarashi reference has something to do with Toho. Man, this is some pop culture references added. I couldn't keep up with the atmosphere, but anyway. Milady was full of life and looked like she was having a great time. For sure. As I looked at Milady having a great time, I thought, isn't this what Ushiro and Mia Jessica is really like? Don't I know better than anyone just how badly life on Gokujima kills your own sense of self? Then the time she spends, not as Milady, the successor to the Ushiro and Mia family, but as a single curl god girl called Jessica, living life to the fullest must be very important to her. I worked close to Milady, saw her in all seasons, and I thought I knew everything about her. Well, that's a, I guess when with a, a casual reader would, uh, would uh, sit there and be hysterical over this saw in all season I thought I knew everything about her but that was only a single limited sight of her Milady of Okajima and it ends like that nice meme uh, okay now we go on to uh, episode 3 okay so episode 1 uh, the only thing that changed is like shoehorning like dialogue to make it like bit of a parody episode two is like the only thing added is like you know jessica uh turning into a marissa from toho and you know, singing the uh that interesting toho song although it's it's like i was like uh i don't know if jessica would be the kind of person to be into like you know the toho rabbit hole but Nice to know, I guess. That's the thing, though, right? Like, ever since, like, the one little thing, like, with Toho is, like, it's, like, it was the fan, the fan-made stuff. Like, the games and the uh, artwork. Uh, I do love the music. And there are, like, um, a lot, there are various genres that can, that, that remixes the, um, the Toho in-game soundtracks. So, was that anyway let's look at episode three uh what kind of goofy stuff you got in episode three yeah we're halfway there it's not really a short but uh would you like to remember your golden dream uh wait what What the fuck? Oh! They penalized me for trying to save, and I to think I would actually uh, think. The game knew I was going to uh, make a save state, and then they just backed me out of the game. Alright. Okay, okay. Let's, uh, let's not you know, fuck around this time. What if I put late, maybe later? God dang it! A few minutes later. Yes, yes. I want to remember my golden dream. What do, you, what do you got? Hit me. Disclaimer, this is nothing but a performance test. <laughs> what? Uh... I'm, I'm 
confused. Choose your care. What? Wait, is this like an interactive game? Oh, it's a interactive game. It's a bit of a interactive game right there. What the hell? <laughs> What? I didn't know Eva Beatrice's teaming up. Well, I'm fighting for Gilia's goat men. <laughs> Wait, I'm fighting the stakes of purgatory? So it doesn't matter whichever character I have to choose, right? I just have to sh just click? Wait. How does this work? There's so many of them. Like, it's insane. Oh, okay, I, I uh, basically completed the level. Wait, does level 2 have like a puzzle order based on like from the oldest to youngest for the per stakes of purgatory? It's, what do you got me this time? Oh, I shouldn't. I didn't mean to skip that. Wait. Wait, how do I even beat this Yes, sister? sisters? They're gonna fuck me up. Wait, am I dead? No! I, I, I get the feeling you're not supposed to beat them. You undoubtedly failed. You do not have enough wisdom to make any sense of this. What? I... I feel... I, I, I guess I'm too stupid to... Uh, to uh, defeat the, uh, the, um, the Chester sisters of, of the sword. Like, <laughs> uh, I, I got no words. All right, let's see. What about episode four? A warm welcome to you, traveler, and congratulations okay, we are back. on your final steps to complete our port of Umineko no Naku Koro Ni, Rondo of the Witch and Reasoning. We appreciate your effort to check every hidden part of the game. Those who have been waiting for this since 2011, when the first promo videos appeared, Please accept our deep apologies. After all that arduous labor, we have reached the grand finale of the first half. Each month was needed to refine things to the level that they are now, and it has to be admitted that our current schedule matches our planned deadlines very closely. Your wild applause, please. 
This Omaki is likely going to be the last one, and we thought long and hard about what to include in it. Maybe some scary stories of what happened to us during the development, reverse engineering, and translation process. Perhaps the minutes of blank despair we had. The times we wanted to sit down, pour our glasses full of something heavy, and send the whole thing to ashes. Hmm, I see. Or even the upcoming news do we plan to announce sooner or later. We even thought of sharing some of the experience we some of the experiences we had. But no, that would have been boring. In the end, we decided to talk about some Easter eggs, question mark, that we found in the remake. Most of them you're supposed to find yourself, so call ours and an appetizer preceding the next reread. Easter eggs. Well, gave me the uh, opening, I guess. Part of me wants to skip it, but nah. The opening theme is a uh, pretty interesting. This is a uh, very interesting adventure right there. Hope you enjoyed the opening video for at least the fifth time. Did you notice anything strange in it? Here is a hint. It's on the record at the beginning. The first thing that comes to mind is senza la verita non si verde, vede. Without something, the truth cannot be seen. We think that word is a monocle, since that small blurry text on the edges of the record that cannot be seen is... I feel like I need a... Is there some... Is this some... Is this episode for a, a mock is something to do... To where I have to solve the mystery right there, which involves the having to uh, uh, comprehend this kind of language. Beata Ricci, something. We doubt we need to say. We doubt we need to say where these lyrics come from. And your homework will be to decipher the first twenty seconds of Igrija of Echoing Vows. Incidentally, while we're on the topic of music, let's ask a simple question. What's the BGM playing now? The answer is Suspicion. Those of you who have BGM title displayed, enable, get zero points. Wow. I guess I get a bit called out called, called out for that. Wait, I thought the fit I thought the opening displayed for the fifth time you already like it just shows me all the scenes I already read up. However, on PS3, episodes 1 to 4 only, you will actually hear a different track under this name. Furthermore, under the name of the other track, you will find that, in, that it instead plays Suspicion. Not so bad for your next piece of homework. Next up, Alchemist did some level of harm to Umineko by the means of censorship. 
Not only did they remove the references to Toho and Dusuru Petan, but also the words from System Zero. Am I, am I just... Okay, I can't tell if you're... Get, see, here's the thing though, right? Not only are you giving me homework, but you're also giving me some interesting uh, trivia. I'm, I'm, I'm well aware that they removed like some... You know... I guess they removed the... I'm pretty sure I already told the comment, but yeah. They censored some stuff up to uh, avoid copyright. Like the Toho one, and System o Zero is something to do with like the what is tech they sampled the from Star Trek or something. I'm pretty sure it was Star Trek. For some reason, probably relating to ratings boards and Japan's drinking age, they removed references to Battler drinking alcohol in episodes one, two, and four. Uh, they also removed a number of references to deal pe to real people, brands, and places, including references to Doraemon, Card Captor Sakura, Steve McQueen, Chateau Petros, and Germany. Yeah, it seems like it. Seems seems more of a the uh, prevent copyright type of thing. Oh, wait. Haven't I even hear those references before? Despite, you know, this is an alchemist game. Eh, whatever. Furthermore, there are unused voice files left on the disc that show that at one point they were even considering deleting references to Higurashi, referring instead to the mystery novel you were reading the other day. Well. I mean... There are, I mean, there are a few characters that relate to a bit of a Higurashi reference. But if you think about it that way, the Higurashi, the writing of it is the same, is the one by the same uh, developer and writer. So, to our relief, they ultimately found this unnecessary. Yeah, but see, there you have it. Oh boy. Yep, there, there it goes. The bit of a Rika Farood noise. In fact, the disc has a number of treasures hidden in the voice files, not only censored and uncensored dialogues, but also faulty texts and incorrect speakers. There are also a few interesting errors that actually made it into the, the game. We'd like to take you on a tour of them now. Oh. Tour, what do we got? The guests had already been greeted, so it was time for some tea to be prepared for them. The, that tea was late, and having the guests talk about making some themselves was an embarrassment for the host. Natsuki bit her lower lip, frustrated with the ineptitude of the servants who were taking too long to bring the tea. Is this something to do with blaming on Shannon? I mean, I've seen that episode one and two, so. Seeing her face, Eva, without hesitation, started to giggle. Of course, Shannon had no way of knowing what was taking place in the parlor. As she came in pushing a dish cart piled with teacups, Natsuki gave her a pained look for no apparent reason and Shannon couldn't help but flinch without knowing what she had done wrong. Wait, I thought this was taking place at the, at the parlor room. But this is a... This is the dining room. しつれいたします。お茶のご用意をさせていただきます。うん、シャノンちゃん、久しぶりやの。おしゃべりは配膳を済ませてからにな
for some reason, even though the text describes them twice as being in the parlor, this is definitely the dining hall. The background file is even called MDIN, short for Mansion Dining. This error was present in the released PS3 game, and we fixed it in our port. Worst of all is that this is the very first time you ever see the parlor, and in PS3 it is presented with dining hall backgrounds throughout the scene, confusing readers as to what the parlor is meant to look like. We think that episode 1 was quite rushed. Returning to the scene a few moments later, we found something buried in the unused voice files. ねえ、シャノンちゃん。銀のスプーンって何に使うか知ってる銀じゃないとダメなのよ。なぜかわかるいえ、あの。I th <laughs> This is Am I just going to get stung luck by that kind of question even me be like, "Okay, well, Okay, is this how black... Is, well, I thought making utensil wear is part of, like, you know, the old-fashioned way of like, having to fucking smith it or something. Eva's eyes played over Shannon, who was setting the table as a catty smile floated onto her face. Taken on its own, the expression on Eva's face may have been charming in an impish sort of way. However, the words being spun from her lips held within them the keenness of a razor. Shannon tried with all her might to avoid Eva's gaze, which continued to focus on her. Grasping that Shannon was hard-pressed for an answer, Rosa promptly gave some timely help. Courtesy of the unused voice files, Rosa's part will be played today by Eva herself. <laughs> what? That is one hell of an error that they, they had to go through right there. Uh, why are we going back to like the episode one tea party? Hold on. Wow, this, yeah, this really feels off sync there. See, that's the thing with like visual novels. There's usually tends to be some pretty uh, common errors here and there. Like, you know, for example, like, you know, like the music part, during, um, uh, the background that is used, was supposed to be used for, uh, it's supposed to be parlor, but instead it's a tiny dining room. That's a common error, and you know, the character dialogue is also another common error. See, I'm not really like you know, I'm not, I'm not really I don't really have the prior knowledge when it comes to like, you know, uh, visual novel bugs or. Like, within like the okay here's the thing though visual novel mechanics is freaking simple you just click for dialogue but sometimes when you see something like this it's an error so it's a bug okay Oh, here's your typical creepy face from Biaterichi. Mahode Dokkan Dokkan! 
そなたが望むなら好きだって砕くし彗星を雨のようにだって降らすさ God damn you're, you're, you're really being going straight away with that one huh? お前好みのセクシーダイナマイト姉ちゃんで島を埋め尽くしてやってもいいんだぜセクシーダイナマイト姉ちゃん Bruh Okay, now this is just pointing out how goofy the uh, uh, adding in like dialogue like that. But the thing with like when it comes to Bea Thorichi, like she, she really loves to emphasize on like you know the English wording. So. When I think about it, the world is so vast and yet so small. Billions of people live on the earth, but I probably won't even. But I probably won't meet even 1% of those people. Even so, I will speak of the world. Without knowing even 1% of the world, I will speak of my world. Oh, this is episode 4. まさに悪魔の証明というわけだわ。いえ、合に入りては合に従えというべきかしら。I can be confident in the world I know. So, even if my world is denied by a complete stranger who doesn't know a thing about it, that's nothing to worry about. And in the same way, just because I don't know another world, that doesn't make me qualified to deny it. Oh, there's the error <laughs> right there. Angie is just a su- Wait. I, I guess- It looks white. <laughs> Look at Angie in the, the right. She, 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 she's just pondering. It's just, just like fucking- She doesn't- She's pondering about how uncomfortable the- The conversation is, but- Maria-o-nei-chan-ga-o-shie-te-kure-ta-ma-ho-o-hite-e-suru-koto-nan-te-deki-ya-shi-nai. <laughs> We are pretty grateful for the materials they left on the disc, actually. Leaving the fixed and uncensored, unused dialogues untouched in the resources actually allowed us to implement a more complete port. They were likely in a hurry. If you played the game on PSP, you will notice that some sprites stopped smiling where inappropriate. PSP? Oh man, that's a throwback. Some mistakes didn't get a fix even there. Hmm, something feels wrong here. No, the waterproof makeup still looks fine. Alright, oh, did Beotorichi randomly lose her previously obtained ring for no reason? Is this just me or is her handbook all messed up as. <laughs> for no reason? In the end, we would like to once again thank our thank all our testers for spending their time on our work. Without you, it would not have been seen. Hey, look at that. Now that's one that's a one hell of a good thumbnail right there. See you again. Have a nice day. See you again. Have a nice day. Oh, I guess that's about it for the uh, Omake or Omake, however you pronounce it. Is 
have they updated anything in the trophies yet? Well, trophy is already... Well, the one trophy is locked, but... I don't know. I guess, uh... I looked through everything, right? Uh... Oh! Look at that. I now got... Oops. Let's see. All the music tracks have been, uh... Add in there. That's pretty good. Oh man. I'm telling you, man, this is a. Most of the uh, music right there can get me copyrighted. No, but. I mean, there are some. Is this the one? Oh. That's not the one. System Zero, original version. Look at this. As you know, Happy Maria is actually pretty amusing too. But yeah, all of the music can be a hell of a venture there. Uh, what else? We got characters? No. Okay, so we already got that. Oh, wait, if I unlock one more trophy, it's something in picture box, right? There we go. Uh, what do we, what do we, what do we got here? Got the uh, rest of the CGs unlocked. Because I, I played through uh, episodes one to four. Do, 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 do. Wait a minute. Is this the first two right there? Oh, look at that. Congratulations. We got bad. We got Badler with the. This looks like it could be fan art, though. Or is that supposed to be a later spoiler that I should not see? Lumineco Project. Translation based on the witch hunt. Witch hunt. Hmm. Oh. That's what's up. We got the uh, rest of the cast. <laughs> And then the rest of the cast, but pumpkin heads. Ain't that special. Witch Hunter. That should be all of the trophies, right? Hey, there we go. So now... That's the funniest thing with this. Like, Okay, that's pretty a uh, bit of a meme that... You get a freaking platinum uh, trophy. Yeah, all the trophies has been achieved. But uh yeah, that's a that's a bit of a what a trip of this uh, experience is right now. But that's uh Umi Neko Donaku Koroni aka Umi Neko question arc looking through the uh Omak uh bonus uh content. Bit of a uh that's a one heck of a wild ride. Uh, 50 minutes in. So, uh, yeah. Hope you guys enjoy this. <laughs> hopefully I didn't... Hopefully I, I don't... You know... I'm not supposed... I'm su Hopefully I'm not the, you know told to uh, analyze through this uh, weird nonsense. But, yeah. Anyway. Um, I won't get a... Go back and uh, finish up the uh, the answer arcs um, when I get back. Like, comment, or subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Have a good one.